Uh, good morning, Paul. Welcome to this fourth session uh, of our symposium. Uh, today, in the morning, we have three presentations. First one, uh, our guest speaker, Paul Hobbs, that will deal with the public spaces, innovation of the public spaces in Portugal. Then, uh, Luisa Tunes is a different uh, method and approach uh, about digital trials and introducing digital fabrication. Uh, which is uh, one other aspect of our symposium. And finally, uh, Teresa Lake with ecological transformations in the same shape, which deals with uh, innovation of public housing in Brazil. Uh, I will suggest that we do all the three presentations uh, uh, together, and then at the end we do a session uh, for questions. So, our bubble. Good morning, uh, my name is Juan Lopes and I'm a PhD student from Michigan, Lisbon. And I'd like to thank the ESAP and the City College Organization for this opportunity to present my investigation work. Uh, we are, I'm presenting a methodology for the analysis and classification of public open space and focusing on formal square is accepted as an individual desirable over health. Uh, collecting contributions from disciplines of urban morphology and site analysis, it aims to synchronically and multidimensionally characterize and classify these urban spaces. It resorts to multivariate statistical analysis and inductive pattern search techniques in large data sets, high data mining. So this work is closely related to what I presented yesterday by Miguel Serra. We have chosen a corpus comprising a significant set of 136 Portuguese squares. These were published in a morphologic study directed by Professor Dias Coelho from FAU in Lisbon in 2007, mostly following the guidance of the Italian School of Urban Morphology with a strong historical and architectural approach. And uh, our main research hypothesis are only the simultaneous considerations of a heterogeneous set of characteristics may reveal public open spaces, identities, as well as unsuspected familiarities between them. And given human limitations to prevent spaces or problems with more than three or four dimensions, computational methods of data mining combined, combined with special analysis and algorithmic design can make a major contribution to urban morphology and design, eventually promoting a better integration of these disciplines. And our generic research objectives are the, the design of an original multidimensional linguistic method for characterization and classification of public open spaces, able to better descriptive and structural approaches to urban form in a single process. To relate morphological features with measurable quality and performance attributes of urban space by data mining. To conceive urban design approach based on concepts or tools and digital tools structured in such a way to take advantage of the analytical methods proposed. Uh, in this presentation, I'm focusing on the first objective. It's an uh, ongoing project uh, work. Uh, so, some background. Um, this, uh, this is from a, a paper from Miguel Serra, and uh, that was here yesterday, and um, uh, in which he says that the creation of meaningful topological descriptions is essential in capturing qualities factored in the urban structures. So classification has a fundamental role in structuring of knowledge. And seven, Gio and Pinho, the authors of this paper, identified the shortcomings of traditional people morphological analysis and suggested the use of unsupervised classification techniques, uh, mainly clustering, to cope with them. Some approaches try to escape the limitation of a roomy or bivariate analysis by classific classifying examples in multivariate three or quadrangular plots, as in the space matrix density theory, or natural analysis of street patterns, for instance. But more powerful models and tools are supported by data mining, and in the secondary subfield of computer science. 
it may also insert prediction, classification of unknown cases and regression, and the discovery of new knowledge, finding unknown patterns in data. Among the numerous methods implemented in data mining, we intend to start by exploring two of the most established principal component analysis and clustering. And the CAPI means how different. In some way, repeating what the Miguel Serra so clearly exposed yesterday, uh, just uh, briefly exposing what is principal component analysis. That, uh, it's a technique that determines a smaller set of artificial variables that summarize the original data and minimize loss of information. In the field of architectural morphology, Below, we can see Shanghai plotting a set of 20th century iconic buildings in the reduced space of the two principal components of their rough spectral analysis of the planet. And revealing an anticipated relationships in the, even in the data. There is a clustering based on building programming that is focusing there. And uh, a chronological regularity from left to right as Shannon points out. In clustering, it's a supervised classification process that assigns objects to groups, clusters, so that objects of each group are more similar to one another than with the objects of other groups. It discovers other groups of objects or variables, identify extreme and architectural examples, and suggests interesting hypotheses about relationships. In top left, Side, we see two types of clustering, partitioning and hierarchical. And hierarchical, also known as the graph. Below, we see a mapping of the capital means clustering analysis on blocks and streets by Gil and others in this one case, area. And on the right, Lascari, on the void space of urban blocks in Athens neighborhood, and comparing various clustering techniques. Being used to 
when explore graphical data, geographical data and open data repositories, complementing the corpus information on the squares. Two, to streamline the database creation and table maintenance. And three, to georeferencing and mapping. With the use of George Geo, CDL plugin, space syntax toolkit, georeferences, the spatial analysis can be conducted inside each. Here we can see a segment analysis, the integration radius uh, with 20 kilometers. On the Portuguese major rule, center lines the location of the squares. For multidimensional analysis, we resort to rapid mining, a popular data mining software, such as our software, based on patterns and visual programming in interfaces. In the process of atributes extraction, some initial definitions and assumptions were made. In order to adapt the nature of each reported attribute to the special scale and characteristic representation, five operating categories of boundaries or special relation scales are proposed. From one, the site strict boundary, determined by the projection of the facet lens that really forms the space of the square, through increasingly wide context to the territorial boundary. Four and five, depicting social cultural differences, differences at a regional and national scale. The attributes were divided into eight teams, which reflect both the diversity and of approaches and scales. Uh, the first, for for its shape, that attributes extracted from the two-dimensional representation of the square by its side boundary. It is anal analyzed as a polygon in order to extract geometric measures, graph views, and uh, shape factors. Vertical plane and permeability, attributes related to the three-dimensional expression of the space perimeter and the facades, both their geometry and their behavior as interface between public and private. Urban indices and density, attributes that relate the area of the square to the area of the surrounding blocks and buildings in terms of their built area and footprint. It focuses on the density measures based on indices defining space matrix theory. Visibility and connectivity. Visibility properties according to street perspectives. One, the distribution of connectivity along the square perimeter and the invisibility of the facade. Two, VGA analysis, which is by the defining neighborhood boundary, aggregating only the values of the points inside the square perimeter. And three, the visibility from the exterior of the square. <coughs> Up to the calculation of sternalities of it, uh, stool, the calculation of sternalities of its overlapping area. Urban system. This attribute group focuses on the local characteristics of the urban system in which the squares are embedded. We extract the syntactic values of axial lines crossing the square, both global and local, and their lengths and geometric relations. Use and appropriation. Attributes which classify buildings such as into the squares into classes according to their uses. The register of the existence of exceptional buildings and characteristic elements of the urban squares. Photons, bloodstands, libraries, kiosks, etc. Environment. This group deals with the existence of environments and other environmental features such as the visible sky area, solar orientation, shadow areas, or the maximum topographic slope. These attributes and the previous ones are related to urban quality potential, which will have to be interpreted in their specific geographical context. And finally, some generic labels that these are essentially attributes related to geographic factors and territorial distribution, or some sort of a priori classification labeling, whose correlation with the data can be tested on machine learning. As the analysis progresses, the definition of attributes may change and be optimized in order to increase the explicitness of the data. Its correlation and type of statistical aggregation shall be tested by exploratory data analysis and by the early modeling of the data mining algorithm. So the proposed workflow is the proposal workflow includes the gathering and preparation of information, the attributes extraction, the tables construction, the data mining and data storage in a central database. Data visualization will be essential to the critical interpretation of life field experts, from which may result the definition of the initial assumptions in the process itself. 
surprisingly, the roots are extracted directly and composed attributes like wild pin densities and shape patterns can be calculated within the database. We briefly describe some of the local algorithms requiring more complex and more specific models. Although very intuitive and user-friendly, native grasshopper scripts have poor scalability. These are intended as learning, these are intended as learning and mock-up devices for testing models that, if promising, would have to be developed in a performance programming language like Python or C. We create an algorithm that uh, this one, this first uh, our algorithm, creates uh, or determines the Hansdorf dimension, one of the various definitions of fractal dimension, by a post of written like process that can be used alternatively to the standard box counting method. It has its pros and cons, but it is less computationally expensive, and in general, and in general for non mathematical fractals, the values we can say, we see. Based on work by Psarin uh, Grajewski and Anwar and Anwar Skari, we implemented a definition that allows the characterization of the square shape by the variation of its connectivity along its printer and the intervisibility of the facade. These are two more examples of visibility connectivity of the facade. In the bottom, in the bottom example, visibility is based on a map. This definition it's quite simple. Uh, it's capable of finding the major segment inscribed within the perimeter of the square. The, it's maybe called the major diameter. And the major and minus at once perpendicular to the, to the minor, minor diameters, as well as the low, lowest absolute diagonal originating from a vertex. These values allow the determination of attributes related to shape factors whose populations are mainly, are mainly taken from the fields of G's and the image analysis. Uh, this one, uh, it's experience, uh, creates uh, to the isobists, but uh, the new thing is that they are, these, these are real geometric isobists without, without uh, no radial sampling. It allows an accurate and interactive control of isobists, location, and the calculation of their geometric base attributes, like occlusion and drift. Use of these fields can be created step by step for points in a grid using Grasshopper's animated slider and data recorder components as a simple for each loop function. However, it is computationally expensive and not presented as a substitute to use of this by radial sampling or their population by specialized data programs like Bitmap or Syntax 2D. Other automatically extract the surface of the facade of in volumes and calculate their area and take maximum mole and entropy values of its distribution, respectively accounting for the presence of landmarks, a predominant rate and its complexity. And, and finally, this algorithm calculates the percentage of the residual area of the sky by subtracting the 3D solid of its spawning spherical surface representing the sky. Using a square bit of points sensors, it records the average percentage of the visible area of the sky and combined with solar geometry, it can be used to calculate the areas primitively in shadow. Other Gibson inspired methods can be envisaged down on the 3Ds of this or the sky map shape. As a faster alternative, recently a two and a half dimensional method is proposed using grasshoppers to the ease of this by radial sampling component on a radial matrix of vertical planes each point in space is characterized by a set of vertical isobists instead of a single horizontal line. The radius is for, it's for now arbitrary and long landscape views are not represented. Nonetheless it accounts for automatic features of the approximate environment which can be modeled in greater detail than in Two in our dimension GIS raster formats like the the, the, yes. the composing these of this printer in solid edge in red, occlusion edge in yellow, and limiting or hemispherical edge uh, in blue in blue. Some spherical visual metrics can be measured, including the view sky factor. 
configurational or relational measures like in graph uh, VGA analysis. And we need, we need more sophisticated methods, like the ones that are being developed here in the ZAP by Professor Tanguyfin or by Tassis. These metrics, metrics can be mapped in the field also. In this exploratory example, the field points are located randomly. There is what is being plotted here is not the unique metric, but the special distribution of four clusters determined by the examples, points, values of three attributes related to the two and a half D visualists. Clusters, two in green, larger central spaces than three in blue. Edge spaces with good visibility seem more or less clear. The other two need a different interpretation. The best number of clusters is not a, an empirical problem. Normally, it is established by the investigator or some heuristics relating to, relating to explaining variance as cluster number and pieces. Each cluster has an archetypal or prototypal abstract example, the cluster centroid. It is defined by all of its examples, attributes, and values. The examples closest to the cluster centroid are typed by a This example makes use of the gas super plugin K means clustering by Daniel David and others that implements this algorithm using the equilibrium distance fun function over the multidimensional normalized vectors representing the several attribute values of each point. Uh, in, uh, as an experiment, the rapid minor and getting used to it, it's a little more complex this one. Uh, we have applied Katamine's clustering to the initial set of 24 attributes of a 2D is of this VGI analysis of a square. This is uh, important moment in Edward. After some initial attribute reduction, so like the, not this year in this case, which was another component of this. this we are uh, here, we are mapped for clusters that represent four distinct types of spaces defined from the dissimilarities of a set of 17 and related attributes of these objects. These are the principles and tools that we propose to apply the classification of the corpus squares. In this example, if we use only the values of some simple geometric properties, very simple. <laughs> and factors of their round figure shape. The number of clusters is chosen. Examples are mapped and cluster attributes mean values are graphed in a parallel plot. This one. The values of the cluster archetype may be the values of the cluster archetype may be displayed. The values are this one the set point of the of the clusters. And the examples closest to be to be to the centroid is highlighted in the example. Here we have eight clusters. Uh, that, uh, as I, I don't run the, the heuristics, I don't know how many I should choose <laughs> because I cannot do it. In, I can only do it in rapid uh, This is not uh, so So here we have six, six four. But to help the visualization and comprehensibility, we visit and tangle the square examples through a spring particle system using physical simulation. It should be ready. Square examples through a spring particle system using physical simulation in Google Super Plugin. The examples tend to group themselves around the center. And differentiation between the examples is expressed by distance to be more or less from some final discussion. Despite this research project uh, is in the early stage, in an early stage, not so early, <laughs> there is confidence in the validity of the approach, and some general points seem clear. Human limitations in handling, visualizing, and discovering patterns in multiple 
dimension of the sets is greatly assisted or only possible by data mining. The potential of data mining in neural morphology and design is mostly unexplored. Multidimensional analysis in neural morphology research is resident to recent, but its advantages are well documented. Heterogeneous knowledge can be associated and used to classify public open spaces from simultaneous perspectives and correlated with the quality of the use. We have presented a scheme for the construction of a multidimensional method inspired specifically designed for uniquely identifying and classified public open spaces through the expressiveness of the data itself and having the formal open square as uh, this starting point. This method entails a comprehensive set of perspectives and scales of analysis using the entire spectrum of spatial dimensions, the synthesis of physical, spatial and material attributes in a single descriptive, descriptive vector, the determination of correlations between attributes and the minimum set capable of their individualization, the bottom of classification of the examples by natural processing of the data. Express, as expressed in the objectives, in future work, the potential of the method points in four directions. First, we extend the examples to other types of contemporary public open spaces that challenge the formal concept of the square. Second, we deepen the potential of data mining in return in analysis, exploring other dimensional evolution and learning supervised and unsupervised techniques. Third, we will ascertain the receptivity of data mining in the urban morphology community, submitting the results to criticism, uh, mainly from the group that, that gave me the, the basis for my work. And fourth, probably the most significant assignment, to correlate spatial and formal attributes with urban quality or real performance measures through data mining techniques in order to explore the potential of combining this analytical method with generative design process.